This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. From the launch your online shop stage, all the way to the we just hit a million orders stage. No matter what stage you're in, Shopify's there to help you grow. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash special offer, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash special offer. This episode is brought to you by Marvel Studios Echo. All episodes streaming January 9th, only on Hulu and Disney+. Plus. Rated TV MALV. Viewer discretion advised. Maya Lopez has betrayed her mentor, the notorious Kingpin. Now on the run, she returns to her hometown to prepare for the biggest fight of her life. Don't miss Marvel Studios' hardest-hitting series yet. An epic five-episode event. Marvel Studios Echo. All episodes streaming January 9th, only on Hulu and Disney+. Plus. Hey, everyone. It's Pacific, and welcome back to another episode of SCP Archives. I don't have a ton to talk about this week, uh, so just a quick recap in case you missed it last week. We announced that Class of 76, our much-anticipated uh, next miniseries, is premiering on October 19th. So stay tuned for that. Uh, it's guest-starring Brian David Gilbert from The Internet, uh, and we have music, uh, six original songs from The Blasting Company, uh, which if you've ever watched Over the Garden Wall, you might be a fan of their music. Um, it's a really cool show, and I'm very excited for it to come out. It has been a labor of love, um, but it's almost here, and I'm excited to share it with you. Uh, aside from that, tons of other stuff happening behind the scenes. It's October, so this is always kind of the busy part of the year for me. Um Creepy's 31 Days of Horror is coming up. Uh, I do a lot of editing for that, so you don't want to miss that. Come in sooner than I'd like to admit. Um, and, and we have a bunch of new shows coming out in October. Uh, the Dead, uh, our partnership with the George A. Romero Foundation, uh, is um, also premiering in October. Uh, a ton, a ton is happening next month. Um, and it's just never enough time. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's all I have for you this week. Um, I'm currently working on revamping the Patreon. I'm just trying to be a bit more active over there. So that's a work in progress, but uh, we're going to try some new things like some video hangouts where I interview like uh, the cast and the crew and you can just kind of like join those and like watch them live. Um, uh, some new different kind of bonus content uh, and, and other stuff. I don't know. I'm figuring it out. Um, but all of that is at patreon.com slash SCP underscore POD. Uh, and that brings me to the most important part of the show, um, our patrons. Uh, I'm still catching up on this list. So this is everyone who signed up uh, in like late July, the second half of July. So I want to give a belated but a very big shout out to Hogrim, James W., Anthony Santilli, Michelle Roberts. Chris Rowe, Stephen Kish, Izuku Midori, David Gardner, Brendan M., and Jaden Grodden. Thanks, guys. You make this all possible. Uh, and if you're interested in becoming a Patreon and hanging out, uh, you can find us at patreon.com slash scp underscore pod. Um, yeah, that's all I got for you. Uh, quick ad break, and then this week's episode. Warning. The Foundation database is classified. Unauthorized access will result in detainment. Within this archive, you'll find the procedures, descriptions, and accounts of the most notorious anomalies we've encountered to date. Secure. Contain. Protect. Item number SCP-5186. Object class, Keta. Special containment procedures. The area containing SCP-5186 is to be routinely patrolled by Foundation naval vessels. Unauthorized vessels approaching the area are to be... Redirected and provided with the cover stories at the area as part of a long-term conservation effort. All Foundation crew members involved with containment 
are to receive routine medical assessments to screen for potential exposure to SCP-5186. Should a crewmate express symptoms of exposure, medical staff are authorized to administer amnestics to all potentially affected crew. In the event that a patrolling Foundation vessel drifts into SCP-5186's range, all involved personnel should initiate the blind sight protocol with immediate effect. Under no circumstances should a vessel open fire at any perceived entity without sonar confirmation from Site-39. Description. SCP-5186 is a behavioral phenomenon linked to a 50-kilometer diameter area of open water off the coast of Chile. Individuals entering SCP-5186's space will initially experience mild discomfort, often complaining about feelings of nausea and restlessness. A further travel in the area inevitably causes subjects to believe they are being watched by an entity in the water. Affected individuals are unable to physically see the entity, and all attempts to locate one with sonar equipment have so far failed. Regardless, subjects will eventually conclude whatever is watching them is large enough to completely devour both themselves and any vessels they may be situated on. This effect remains consistent, regardless of vessel size. Belief that the entity watching them is real increases with proximity to the epicenter. Examination of an affected subject's brain activity shows heightened stimulation of the amygdala. This effect is consistent across all subjects and suggests a natural fight-or-flight response as specific to SCP-5186. Depending on the subject's mental state and the distance traveled into SCP-5186's area, this fear response can induce severe anxiety, dread, and depression. Discovery SCP-5186 was initially brought to the Foundation's attention in 1987, following the loss of a Colombian research vessel. The missing team was investigating the depths of hunger. A sea shanty spread among sailors during the 16th century. A sea recovered document 10B for further details. Reports indicated the vessel had been written off as lost to storms by local coast guard. However, an inquiry carried out by the Foundation revealed a large portion of water which had been intentionally avoided by search and rescue teams during the investigation. Following reports of a potential hostile entity by exploration groups, Foundation naval vessel Chimera was deployed to assess the threat. One hour after entry, the site command received a distress signal from the vessel before Chimera proceeded to open fire at the surrounding water. All orders to stop were ignored. This behavior continued for approximately 20 minutes before a detonation on board tore a hole in the port side hull. Despite possessing the means to repair the damage, the crew retreated to the uppermost deck and the vessel sank, and 62 lives were lost. A secure perimeter was established and containment procedures were enacted on August 6, 1988. The further refinement of the perimeter was put in place in 1993, following additional D-class testing. Recovered document 10B. The following is a partial transcript of the shanty, The Depths That Hunger, a song with potential links to SCP-5186. The document was recovered from the home of Dr. Gabriella Reni, one of the missing Colombian researchers during the Foundation's initial investigation. According to Dr. Renning's notes, the song has existed since at least 1513. Beware, beware the beast beneath the voice and shadow and moors and teeth. With baleful gaze that chills the bone, beware, beware the thing not known. Beware, beware the storms at night that drag young sailors to their plight. For down below a horror slumbers, beware, beware the depths that hunger. Beware, beware the beast beneath the voice and shadow and moors and teeth. 
Hey everyone, Pacific here with a quick ad break and a reminder. You can get access to ad-free and bonus episodes for just $5 a month on our Patreon at patreon.com slash scp underscore pod. And now, back to the show. SCP-5186 affects test log excerpts. A procedure. D-1924. Told to ride an unmanned dinghy into SCP-5186's range. Result. Dinghy travels approximately 14 kilometers in before D-1924 suddenly falls unconscious. Notes. See experiment log D-1924 for further details. Procedure. D-3416 outfitted with scuba gear and a vocal transducer before swimming into SCP-5186's space approximately 20 meters below surface level. Result, D-3416 swims 8 kilometers before suddenly halting. The subject refuses to look down, abandoning their breathing equipment in an attempt to quickly reach the surface. D-3416 drowns approximately 70 seconds later. Notes, 10 minutes prior to their death, D-3416 kept vocalizing concerns about nothing but jaws just waiting to kill them. Procedure, D-4725, outfitted with scuba gear and lowered into the epicenter of the SCP-5186's range by helicopter. Result, during the lowering procedure, the Pilot suddenly initiates an emergency flight maneuver that throws both D-4725 and two other crew members into the water, killing them on impact. Notes, following this incident, the use of aircraft for testing purposes has been prohibited. Consideration for extending SCP-5186's range 100 meters above sea level has been made. Addendum 51861, Experiment Log D-1924. A testing purpose, to gain a better understanding of SCP-5186 and locate the source of its anomalous effect. Additional information. Subject D-1924 was equipped with standard audiovisual recording devices and a life jacket. Additionally, the unmanned dinghy has been fitted with an onboard camera for monitoring purposes. Exploration was observed by Dr. Harking at Site-39. For brevity... The following log begins approximately 10 minutes after initial entry into SCP-5186. Hey, Doc. There ain't any sharks out here, right? I can't say we know for certain, I'm afraid. Ha! <laughs> ah, fair enough. Sierra's probably fucking with me anyways. D-1924, please elaborate. I'm just not used to being so far out in the ocean, that's all. Uh, it got me feeling kind of antsy. Uh, being stuck on this thing doesn't make things any easier, that's for damn sure. Just stay focused on the mission, please. <sighs> you got it, Doc. 
dinghy continues forward without issue. D-1924 is noticeably irritable, but remains seated. The subject travels for three kilometers without any major issues. After starting at the surrounding ocean for a short while, D-1924 becomes suddenly active. He stands up and begins to peer down into the water. I think there's something down there. Pardon? In the water. I think there's something down in the water. We might have something. Did you see anything? No. I mean, I mean, I don't think so. But I can definitely feel it. Like, like it's staring at me. Right now, in fact. I see. Could you give us a quick look underwater, please? Uh, yeah. Of course. The camera feed is angled downwards into the water. No life is immediately visible. I think it's too far down, Doc. Whatever it is. Understood. Continue as normal, but you try and keep an eye out for it if you can. Sure thing. As the subject continues to check the sides of the boat for any movement below, given the depth of the surrounding ocean, it's impossible to make anything out beyond a hundred meters. The subject appears nervous, was this fact. A dinghy travels an additional four kilometers before D-1924 begins shuffling away from the sides of the spot. Something's not right, Doc. I, 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 don't, I, I don't think I should be out here. I'm afraid you don't have much choice in the matter. No, I'm serious. I'm not supposed to be out here. If I keep going, I think it's going to hurt me. What's going to hurt you? Can you describe it? I, I don't know. Is something wrong in the dark. I, I can feel it staring at me from everywhere. It's like it's everywhere underneath me. When asked to look into the water again, the subject is far more reluctant to do so. The camera feed fails to pick anything up. D1924, are you in any way afraid of the ocean? Oh, what? I mean, no. Not really. But this isn't the same, Doc. It's real. It feels real. Like I've always known whatever's down there isn't to be fucked with. And what do you think is down there, exactly? I don't think I want to be out here anymore. You're going to be fine, D-1924. Dingy proceeds with its journey towards SCP-5186's epicenter. At this point, D-1924 has chosen to sit in the middle of the boat. The subject maintains eye contact with the floor. In the last few hours since D-1924 set off, they've traveled approximately nine kilometers. Subject's breathing has become noticeably more rapid. It's getting closer. What was that, D-1924? It's just a feeling. I I know it doesn't make any sense, but but it's freaking me out. Something bad down there. It's, It's getting closer and bigger. I think... I I think it might be too late. D-1924, what on earth are you talking about? It's like every part of me wants to just just get out of here. I've got to get out of here. Please, get me out of here. D-1924 begins moving towards the back of the boat. Calm down. Everything's going to be fine. Just a little further now. No, Doc. Uh, no, no, no. You've, you've got to... You don't get it. I've got to get out. If you turn me around now, I might still make it. You know that's not possible. Not yet, anyways. We still haven't even seen this creature. Now, why don't you calm down for a moment and explain to me No, what- no, 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 no. There's no time. It's getting close. It's, it's nearly here, man. It just... Just turn the fuck around, please, man. Speed it up! We're getting close now. The dinghy's speed is increased by five knots. The sudden acceleration forces D-1924 onto the floor. No, no, no. No, no, no. What are you doing? What are you doing? D-1924 is quickly taken past the 12-kilometer threshold. The subject begs to be taken back, but all pleas are ignored. Another two kilometers go by, and D-1924 falls completely silent. The subject is curled up in the fetal position, 
completely obscuring the camera. A faint dripping sound that can be heard. Dr. Harking makes multiple attempts to communicate with D-1924, but receives no response. The camera feed suddenly lights up once more, as D-1924's left arm unfurls and hits the floor. The hand remains motionless. Subject's skin is incredibly pale and covered in moisture. The camera is slowly rotated upwards to face the sky, as the dinghy tips D-1924's unconscious body onto its back. D-1924 was successfully recovered eight hours later, following the recall of Cerveza. Notably, subject regained consciousness midway through the return journey, but showed an extreme reluctance to move from their current position. Amnestic therapy has proven effective at treating D-1924's manifested thalassophobia. Addendum 51862, Exploration. Currently, the Foundation has been unable to identify the source of SCP-5186. However, given the potential for a Leviathan-class hostile entity, exploration teams were deployed to gain conclusive evidence. Exploration Video Log Transcript 1 Purpose To locate the source of SCP-5186 and to identify any anomalous entities associated with it. Assigned Personnel uh, counterphobia specialists Orion 12 gauges pioneers. Additional information Orion 12 have all undergone experimental neural modifications, making them resistant to fear inducing anomalies. All members were equipped with high pressure suits and recording equipment. Additional scanning equipment was distributed to all members. Exploration was observed by Dr. Harking at Site 39. Comms check. Go. Spolsky. Loud and clear. This is O'Keefe. Greenfield here. You get all that, Doc? Affirmative. Communications are stable. I assume you all remember the briefing? Correct. Reports of some kind of aquatic hostile. Possibly cloaked, big, by the sounds of it. But there hasn't been any confirmed attacks, right? It's hard to say. Getting anyone to talk about it clearly is... Difficult. And you're sure it's not just a cognito hazard? Some sort of perception alterer? Well, we really just don't know. I'm not happy about any of it, but truth be told, we can't afford to ignore this. I want to cover every angle. And you guys are my best shot. <sighs> Looks like a real dues in our hands, then. Okay, team, you know the drill. Once we're in the water, standard line formation. Then we'll fan out from there. Happy fishing, team. Orion 12 proceeded to dive into the waters of SCP-5186. As expected, no team members show any symptoms of SCP-5186 exposure. Following several hours of exploration, the team failed to notice any signs of life. Sapolsky and O'Keefe are both elected to swim further down, whilst the other two continue their search near the surface. Okay, preparations made. Moving out now. The diving team proceeds to move further down. The light levels at this depth are significantly reduced, and both team members are forced to activate their flashlights. Their camera feeds depict nothing but water. Not picking up much yet, Doctor. Visibility is definitely an issue. And nothing is showing on the sonar, correct? Affirmative. Looks like we're the only ones down here right now. Understood. Continue closing in on that central location. If the effect radius hasn't moved in this long, then maybe it hasn't either. Understood. Both divers continue to swim for another two hours with no encounters. Hang on, I might have something here. Go on. I made a quick signal check with the scanners just to be sure. I'm actually picking up something beneath us. Unknown frequency. Could be a misfire, though. Hold on, O'Keefe. Doctor, do we know if there's any drone units down here? Something with a transmitter? Negative. All nearby units were pulled when you guys moved in. Is there a problem? Unclear. We'll get back to you in a second. O'Keefe, do you still copy? Yes, sir. Triangulate that signal and investigate. I have Sapolsky go first, if he can hear this. Me and Greenfield will try and meet you halfway. Understood. 
as the team proceeds as planned. Sapolsky heads towards the signal source with the coordinates provided by O'Keefe. Approximately 20 minutes later, Sapolsky reports that he's reached the seafloor. Okay, Sapolsky. Do you have eyes on the source? Negative. All I'm seeing is rock down here. Not much else. But there has to be more to this. You're certain you're at the right coordinates? Yes, sir. And you didn't encounter anything along the way? Negative. Nothing but endless water, I'm afraid. I see. Wait. Can you confirm your current depth for me, Sapolsky? Hang on. Approximately 3,976 meters. (sighs) According to the topographical data within this area, you should have at least another 300 meters to go. Oh. Shit. The rest of the team begin to quickly converge on the signal's position. Sapolsky is instructed to carry out a more thorough investigation of the surroundings. What's down there? It's too dark. Flashlights aren't much use either. Sapolsky, you got a better visual yet? No response. Sapolsky? Michael? Doc, Sapolsky isn't responding. Is he still on comms? The connection's weak, but yes, he should be. The camera feed is too patchy, though. I can't make anything out. He can't be far from the signal source, sir. Agreed. Everyone on me. Keep your eyes peeled. The remaining team members move in on Sapolsky's last known location. Besides the team's movements, there is no sound. Dr. Harkin continues trying to make contact with the missing teammate. O'Keefe and Greenfield proceed to check the rocky surface Sapolsky initially encountered, whilst Makram looks for him further upwards. Nothing down here, sir. Just more rock. Signals definitely coming from here, but the thermals aren't showing anything. Just more rock. It really doesn't look like much up close. I'm coming to join you, Greenfield. Need to look at the wider picture, maybe. Just keep an eye out for Michael, will you? Wait, up there. What is it? I found Zapolsky. He's unresponsive, but breathing. (sighs) I think he's gone catatonic. Just more rock. Greenfield, your comms are lagging. Wait. Greenfield? What's wrong? More. Rock. Greenfield? What is it? I can't see anything. What's happening? I don't know. Guys, what's going on? More. More. Rock? Sir, it's Greenfield. I think she's compromised. Fuck. Whatever you do, O'Keefe, don't move. I'm heading towards your position now. Sir, it's like she's pointing at something beneath us. Hang on. Pointing at what exactly? Forget it, Doc. I'm aborting the mission. O'Keefe, prepare for... What's down there, operative? I... I don't know. It's hard to tell. Just hold on. I'm nearly there. I'm holding on. Right, I'm here. I'm here. Yep, same as Sapolsky. Damn it, okay. O'Keefe, get the tethers out. You take the link with Greenfield and I'll take Sapolsky. I'm aborting the mission. The... mission? Yes, the goddamn... O'Keefe, what are you looking at? Down. Nothing looking down. What's wrong with the audio? Holding on to nothing. It's not the audio. Uh, operative down. Oh. Nothing but home. What? Marco, what the hell is going on? Something's down there. Something they've all seen. (sighs) Listen, I'm gonna try and drag O'Keefe up with me. Maybe. Maybe we can figure out what this really is later. I see. And the others? Going back for them would be too dangerous. They'll both have sunk further down by now. I can't risk looking for them, Doc. Understood, Marbury. You're clear to retreat. Get an extraction team at the ready immediately. Let's get you home, buddy. Oh, man. Several hours pass before Markram surfaces with O'Keefe in tow. 
An evaluation reveals that the affected specialist experienced severe cognitive stress, similar to a sudden loss of reality. All attempts to revive O'Keefe from his catatonic state fail. Extraction of both Sapolsky and Greenfield is considered too risky. Both specialists have since been deemed KIA. Re-evaluation of exploration methods put into consideration. Exploration video log transcript 2. Exploration purpose. To locate the signal source initially detected by Orion 12 and to uncover any potential links to SCP-5186. Assigned personnel. Deep Sea Rover Unit I-12. Additional information. Following the events of Orion 12's exploration, an unmanned drone running the prototype JEL-C intelligence program is deployed to counteract any potential memetics or cognito hazards. Using the signal source coordinates, the drone is deployed onto the seafloor and sent into SCP-5186's space. Exploration was observed by Dr. Harking at Site-39. Systems check I-12. Are we good to go? Affirmative. Coordinates locked. Approaching target now. Rover proceeds to move towards Orion 12's last known location before extraction. The seafloor is somewhat uneven, making traversal difficult. Frequency detected. Faint. Beyond audible spectrum. Ah, that must be what the last team picked up on. Can you synthesize it at all? Negative. Too weak. Must get closer. Drone continues forward. Several hours pass. Inconsistency detected. Abnormal incline encountered. 62%. An incline? You must be at the same point the pioneers got to. Sudden topographical material shift detected. Obtaining sample for identification. Please hold. Processing. Analysis. Calcium, 85%. Phosphorus, 5%. Unknown, percent. Assessment. Foreign biological material identified. Wait, you found... you found it? Is... is it alive? Negative. No life signs detected. Biological material appears to be in an advanced state of decay. Type. Remains fossilized. Age. Unknown. No baseline decay model to compare. Size. Undetermined. Fragments appear partially embedded. Course of action. Well, I'll be damned. Map out a full 3D layout if you can and send me the data. I want to get a better look at this thing. Whatever it is. Acknowledged. Beginning scanning procedure now. Dr. Harking doesn't hear from the rover unit for several more hours. Both its audio and visual feeds fail to pick up much in the dark. I-12, what's taking so long? Scanning still in progress. Please hold. Scan progress made. Zero, 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 point one percent. Estimated time until completion. Nine. Nine, 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 nine hours. What? What's going on? Triangulation of the drone's signal shows that it's moving around in a continuous circle. It's traveled approximately two meters from its initial scan point. Initial interpretations available. Analysis. I. 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 Mapping cannot be accurately carried out. Uh, why not? Error. Entity does not conform to baseline perceived reality. Cannot interpret visually. Cannot understand. What is entity? <sighs> I was hoping you could tell me. Negative. Dimensions are illogical. Appearance is illogical. What is entity? Forget about it for now, I-12. Abandon the scanning procedure. But what, 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 what? At this point, Dr. Harking is forced to reboot the drone's systems and memory remotely. 
the drone's visual equipment is also deactivated to prevent further malfunctions. I-12's mission parameters are now only focused on extracting a copy of the frequency. Okay, okay, okay. Just breathe, Adam. I-12, do you have a better connection to the signal? Affirmative. Strength of frequency has increased significantly. Abnormality detected. Signal appears to be emitting from biological matter. Method unknown. Course of action? From the what? Never mind. Just send me a copy immediately. I need something to wrap my head around this. Frequency successfully duplicated. Sending copy now. Okay. This is good. Thank you, I-12. That'll be all for now. You got it yet? Good. Play it back for me. See if you can make any sense of what the hell is... All communications with Site-39 cut out, as SCP-5186 makes its presence known. Evacuation protocols are quickly initiated. Attention, Site-39 director's notice. Uh, Following Dr. Harking's reckless behavior, Dr. Langley will be taking over all research projects relating to SCP-5186 effective immediately. All other research efforts are to be temporarily put on hold until further notice. Incident 01. Uh, Two days after Site-39's exposure to SCP-5186, on-site security teams were forced to respond to a Code Blue containment breach incident. According to the security logs, a Level 4 clearance card was used to unlock SCP- cell. A number of structures were damaged during the incident, including the recently established SCP-5186 research wing. A fire had reportedly ignited in one of the labs, destroying multiple sensitive documents. Fourteen staff were killed during the incident, and Dr. Harking has remained unaccounted for. A document was recovered from his office. A hand-drawn image of the SCP logo, surrounded by a mouth full of sharp, pointed teeth. Scrawled below the drawing are the words, We are already dead. SCP Archives was created by Pacific S. Obadiah and John Grills. SCP-5186 was written by Dr. Dodds. Our script was by Kevin Whitlock. Our narrator was Chris Harris Beachy. D-1924 was Russ Moore. Dr. Harking was Damon Alums. Greenfield was Madeline Moore. Markram was Kayla Temshiv. O'Keefe was Katrina Piscina. Rover I-12 was Bonnie Calderwood Aspinwall. Sailor was Daisy McNamara. And Sapolsky was Jesse Hall. Our theme song was done by Tom Rory Parsons, and our editor was Veronica California. Our showrunner is Kale Brown, and I'm your producer, Pacific S. Obadiah. Our executive producers are Tom Owen and Brad Miska. And this is a Bloody FM show. For more information, visit bloody.fm.